Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first webinar of Root Labs. I'm Bart Moons, working for Data Roots, and I will be your host for the session. And normally, Root Labs organizes in person events with a different speaker around artificial intelligence topics. But as we are faced with the COVID 19 lockdown, we are planning to organize some lunch, short lunch sessions around artificial intelligence topics uh, during this uh, period of lockdown. We uh, have, as a topic, we have data lakes today. And data lakes, it's about enabling the power of big data on the agenda. Um, first, defining data lake, what is it? Uh, why is it here? The benefits of data lake and some industry examples. I also want to point out that on Thursday, we have a follow-up session on data lake uh, uh, webinar. And it's actually a customer use case that we'll be presenting on Thursday. Defining the data lake, well, um, some historical fact. The term data lake uh, is nearly celebrating its 10th anniversary. So James Dixon um, first mentioned data lake uh, almost 10 years ago. And it was in a comparison with uh, a bottle of water where he pointed out that a data mart is more bottle of water. It's pre-produced, it's produced according to a predefined requirements of a user, and it's also suited for one person or a group of person. And he compared it to a data lake where you have a pool of water, a pool of data, and actually you would bring a drinking bottle to the lake and you just take what you need and you can come back as many times as you want to the data lake. So, the bottle of water, the bottle of water, is it not working anymore? Or are we changing it to a data lake? And actually it's, it's, it's a very user-friendly approach. And we have uh, an end user who receives this bottle of water. It's according to its pre-requirements and it's ready for consumption. So uh, very user-friendly, but it's, we are facing a different context at the moment. And, this context is the context of big data. So uh, traditionally, we would have applications and it's structured data source, and we extract some of the data around customer services, products. We create a subset of this data, and we create, and uh, for marketing, a bottle of water. We create for sales a bottle of water, for HR, for other things. And these would have the, the, the data and the insights they want to have from these numbers for them uh, particular. Now, the context has kind of changed where that we are having a, for e-commerce, for example, there is a, an explosion of data going on um, at the moment. And actually, if we, if we look at the volume of data which is generated uh, the last two years in 2019 and 2018, we have generated the same amount as data as we have done in all prior years to 2018. And it's still growing. And so at, um, we're generating at this moment enormous amounts of e-commerce data and online data. There are new users, vendors are shifting to a online model. So the volume of data is, is increasingly tremendously, but also velocity and so the speed of data, um, keeping it in an e-commerce marketing uh, context, you wanna have uh, promotions at the right time, uh, at a checkout, uh, you wanna have these real-time analytics performed, and which is not traditionally, it's not possible in a traditional way of, of working. And uh, so in, in the traditional of working where we have this extract and transform, we don't have, actually, we don't have time to do real-time analytics if we still need to transform and load this data, create subsets, and then provide this bottle of water. And a term, a third, um, term is the variety. Yeah? We often describe big data with three Vs, uh, being volume, velocity, and variety. And the variety is, 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 is relating to different kinds of data sources. And we have the structure data source we have traditionally in applications, but we also have unstructured data. And unstructured data is, is, is increasingly, yeah, I'm, I'm referring to reviews of your products, posts on social media about, but also pictures, uh, video images. So there is a much more variety of data that you want to analyze. And data lake is a, 
kind of the en enabler of this big data. Yeah? So the data lake uh, in terms of, of volume, and we have the data lake, which often we are building, we are referring to a public cloud provider to, to, to build these, and it, it, these solutions in terms of volume are massively scalable. Uh, but also in, in the flexibility of data. If, if you have new data coming in, you want to have this data as soon as possible available. Uh, in terms of real-time analytics, you want to have ingestion methods that can deal with real-time data, with, with, with stream data. And also on variety, you want to have a solution which is built to deal with all different kinds of uh, data sources. So, it brings us a bit to the key components of a data lake. And the data lake, on the one hand, it's going to ingest uh, structured and unstructured data. It's what we uh, discussed uh, already. Very importantly, we need to know what is in the data lake. Uh, so we need to know what is the data we put in. So we come to data catalog. We want to we wanna have some uh, data describing our data in the data lake. But also we want to create a indexes and a common data model so we can join, for example, our customer over different data sources. And next to uh, having this common data model, we want to also make it secure. And so it's very important that we have uh, security on this data, authentication, authorizations, which are the people that consume, and we relates also to the fourth point of our data leads, which is the consumption of this data. We want to make this data and, um, consumable by different kinds of users. So on the one hand, you would have data scientists which are creating machine learning models or predictive modeling, but also you will have business users creating actionable insights of this data. So um, in terms of visualizing a data lake, it would kind of high level uh, look like that. So um, most likely I will scare some people and, and then there are some on, the people I've scared, you can keep your eyes on the left side of the screen where there's less uh, scary pictures. But what I want to point out is that we have these different data sources. We have the data lake where we ingest this data and this data is ingested. We have two streams. One is the batch stream and which are uh, more the traditional way of storing, but also real time processing. And this data is stored in a raw data store format. It means that this one is a one-to-one -one with the data source. You just extract and load, and which makes it much more quickly than when you have a transform of your data process. You just extract and load the data in a uh, first staging raw data store. You would have the two streams and the batch processing stream and the real-time processing uh, stream to come to this process data store. So who's consuming this data? Uh, here we have an AI platform, for example, for data science business users are creating insights and they will consume the data. So they can actually consume the raw data, which is in there very, very quickly. And in terms of, of, of a solution, you're, you're, you're adding new parameters to your data. It's a matter of hours before it's in your raw data store and it's consumable and, and ready to build solutions. Uh, solutions that you can store in your process data store, but actually also we can have integrations directly to by backend solutions. And for example, uh, in, in if you're calculating a churn probability, you want to have this pr churn probability integrated in, into your CRM system, and you want to have an after sales person that can take an appropriate action uh, on this particular customer. Now, is the, is the bottle of water gone? No, it's still the combination of your data lake with a bottle of water being the data mart you have and the results of, of, of your AI solutions or your machine learning, which are stored in the process data store, can actually go back to this um, organized enterprise data warehouses data mart where it's also um, available to uh, in, be included in a presentation layer or it directly. So what are the benefits of a data lake? The benefits of the data lake, it's on the one hand, it's agility. Uh, agility, you take what you need, you want some more data, you, you refer back to your data lake, you, you join data, you create uh, your, in, your own uh, small pool of data. In terms of scalability, uh, uh, we have this variety of data sources, 
we can have storage uh, availabilities for all kind of um, um, data sources, structured, unstructured, video, pictures, um, and, and, and other data sources. Then we come to this centralized data and uh, democratized data. The data we, we store in our data lake, we actually, we make it consumable. Right? We make it consumable for all different users. And on the one hand, and the data scientists, but also business users or analysts that can work with this data. The data, like I said, is governed and there is, we, we will apply a common data model to our data common data model, which is built around uh, the, the, the main uh, drivers of your business, uh, customers, your products, your services. And this makes the data joinable. So the scheme of flexibility again goes to the variety of your data sources. And you don't need a schema upfront. And you don't need to know the solution upfront. And actually in a data lake, you're actually uh, exploring uh, more the solution or doing research um, in, in, in these uh, data, uh, in, in the data lake itself. Um, yeah, the time to value is also related to the agility and, 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 and the way of working. So it's, it's much more uh, time to value. Right? If you want to add data, it's, it's easily added in the data lake and it's, it, it's easily consumable by these end users, which makes that they um, reach a higher user productivity. So to end up some industry examples, so who's using data lakes? Um, an example is smart manufacturing. And so new uh, production machines, they come in with a uh, hundred uh, built-in sensors, uh, sensors that are giving values every milliseconds. Uh, if you do vibration analysis, you, you would have uh, every milliseconds, you will receive some values in a production environment where you have a hundred machines. In, in terms of volume, you're, yeah, yeah it, it's becoming big data very, very quickly. Um, and it, I've added the uh, reference architecture here again, and just to point out that what is different than with the, the overall uh, reference architecture, it, it's the data sources. The data sources in, in smart manufacturing are different. We, are, we use ERP systems, MES, we have maintenance instructions, uh, unstructured data sources. Uh, we use computer, uh, we use machine vision. Uh, video images, we use sensor data, maybe uh, transport. But the data lake it itself or the, or, the, or the way it's structured, it stays the same. And so we have our ingestion methods, uh, ERP, it will use batch processing, machine vision, sensor data, we will use the real-time processing stream. We have our read raw data source with a reference to our data, um, the, the actual data in the data store. And then you have the, the, the the uh, people that are consuming this data and they will build solutions around predictive maintenance, uh, warehouse optimizations or, or other things and they, they create integrations to the backend systems. But actually the, the data lake network uh, itself, it stays the same. So if we have uh, marketing data or HR data coming in, it's consumable by other people in the organization and they will build all the other solutions. But the data lake remains the same. So another example, which is uh, where the, we are using data lakes is, is, is personalized marketing and with, with digitalization and the e-commerce uh, explosion, the physical uh, customer is, is becoming more a digital customer. And then how do you know this digital customer? How can you know things about it? It's about gathering data. It's about gathering data of your of your customer, and it's 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 not only socio demographics, but it's also transactional data by its uh, website browsing, the basket analysis, uh, scroll length of page, uh, time on a page, uh, in the basket, out of the basket, and at the end you want to have recommendations, and these recommendations it, it could be uh, promotions, but it's also recommendations that um, in in in, in in content, and for example, if you're shopping for clothes, it's, 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 the, the, the choice is so enormous that you would have a recommendation engine for a person that, that give him a selection which is in there, which is uh, to his personal needs. 
um, so you're actually actually uh, it's a win-win situation that you're creating uh, in this uh, personalized marketing some other examples to end up um, so life science life science they are the biggest users uh, of data lakes uh, uh, actually uh, we have some initiatives now it, there is data against corona which is running and it, it's gathering data and it's using data lakes to store all this data but also in, in gen analysis for example uh, you have uh, gen series of one person uh, it's it's nearly 200 gigabyte of data for one person so uh, we are 7.6 billion people here so yeah, life science is just uh, all about uh, big data uh, smart cities um, using data lakes for uh, for example for video images and processing uh, optimize uh, entering the city for for uh, for pedestrians for bicycles for uh, cars for other vehicles logistics track and trace systems are using uh, data lakes um, in order to produce uh, these uh, track and trace uh, solutions cyber security cyber security also now right, with a lot of people working from home um, and, and and entering your um, organization network from outside you want to have do real-time analytics to see if all these actions are proper actions and that there are no fraudulent actions so it's about uh, a lot of actions that are people taking and and analyzing these in, in real time so they're also using data lakes in order to provide these cybersecurity solutions uh, energy the smart grid it's uh, about matching supply and demand. It's um, real-time analytics. It's enormous uh, volume of data that needs to be analyzed. Uh, oil and gas, so uh, oil and gas are there actually the, the, the earliest adopters of data lakes in the cloud. And the, the, the list of, of, of use cases is, is uh, very broad. Um, it, it actually, they, they use the drilling information, for example, is analyzed. And so they can do horizontal drilling instead of vertical drilling, which is very, very more cost effective. And so I think all uh, companies in drilling, they are producing uh, terabytes of uh, sensor data uh, per day. So uh, you could see that uh, data lakes are already uh, in use. Um, that's the end of the uh, webinar on the data lake introduction so uh, I want to invite you to uh, join us on Thursday again and then we'll have the uh, customer case actually we will discuss the VRT which is the Flemish uh, broadcasting company and how they are using a uh, data lake in order to provide solutions to uh, their end customers so uh, thank you for joining and I hope to see you on on Thursday <music>